Welcome back to Full Speed Racing. We're here at Brands Hatch for the Mini Festival and the pre-66 Mini Anglo-French Battle. And this, the fight to lead the race between Dan Wheeler and Dave Mountain. Wheeler and Car 88, Mountain number 76. And the pair of them have been going at hammer and tongs, really, since the start of the race. All the while, though, they have got Graham Churchill looming ever larger in the black number 15 car in their mirrors as he hunts them down. Behind, they're swarming impacts. Battles to be found throughout the field as Philippe Kyrie does his very best to hold off Keith Padmore, Jonathan Hartop and Peter Cruz. Peter Cruz in number six has been steadily working his way up the order as the race has gone on. He's biding his time and he is now going to drive himself into contention for at the very least a decent top ten finish. Pack of cars accelerates along the Cooper straight then. They're in pursuit of Robert Beebe who's just broken clear for the time being of that group. There's Jonathan Hartop. 78, he is in turn just clear of Ken Welsh. Just spinning off goes Keith Padmore. So Keith Padmore loses it around. He goes, just pushes it a little bit too hard into clearways. And Padmore rotating from contention. And that is going to be very disappointing for Keith because he was well up inside the top five. The race began to close up again in the last of stages. And the podium was potentially on the cards as he should recover and get a reasonable finish out of this one. The rest of them continue the pursuit of synchronised sliding through Pallet Hill Bend. At the back of that shot there, we just caught a glimpse of Brian Johnson, who's driven up from 19th on the grid, and he's beginning to work his way towards the tail of this scrap, which is a very impressive performance as he begins to gain a little bit of ground. Peter Cruz is really carving his way through this group of cars. As they begin to get themselves involved a little bit in traffic. Martin Hunt as well in the thick of the action. Welsh, just on the tail of Jonathan Hartop. Hartop, as we relied on Bond, to go very competitively in these. And he's accelerating out of Clark Curve then. And on to the Bradham Straight. Still, this group of cars running very, very tightly together. An awful lot of separation. Clayton Edwards, another driver, who's just coming into the mix. That was the uh, cream number 62 car. Just caught a glimpse of as Hartop. And Kui there goes side by side through Paddock Hill Bend. The rest of them all sliding through. All the while, though, this is enabling the leaders just to run well, well clear at the head of the field as Peter Cruz picks his way past some of the traffic. Curie, fortunately, is finding himself the victim of being moved down the order. He's been passed by Jonathan Hartop. He may well be passed by Ken Welsh in the next couple of moments. And still there in the thick of the traffic. And then it's Martin Hunt who's next along with Patrick Blakeney Edwards. Uh, the rest of them waved blue flags and letting them know there are faster cars around. It's very, very hard to pick the perfect spot on the track, particularly through the Surtis McCarran's section when you are being lapped, because you can see cars are coming at you from each and every direction. There is Brian Johnson, who has latched himself onto the tail of Laurent Maggio. So they're all really part of this battle. Still the fifth position, but you should say that for the time being, with the BBs, and he just broken clear of the fight for fifth. And as they've been picking their way through the traffic, this group has maybe just split itself into two ever so slightly. I think that's the case because there's sort of a group of four or five of them. Then that slight gap back to Patrick Blakeney Edwards. There is Blakeney Edwards in 62. He's also a very well renowned vintage car race as well. So these pre 66 cars almost a little bit too much into the near of what you'd normally expect to see Blakeney Edwards on the wheel of. Martin Hunt still on the tail of Philippe Curie, possibly to be able to move past Curie. As they arrive into Surtees, it's going to be tight. Linz McLaren, it's Kyrie, has got the inside line though. The brakes at clearways, and he holds on. For a while though, Peter Cruz has driven through this group. He's now clear of Jonathan Hartop, sets his sights on Robert Beebe up the road ahead of him. There is Beebe, still in fourth position. Here's the fifth place man, Peter Cruz. He's got Hartop and Ken Welsh company then. That Back to the next group, headed by Martin Hunter, home from Philip Kyrie and Patrick Blakeney Edwards, also Paul Lynch, and now Brian Johnson, past part of that group. Johnson who's moved past Laura Maju, but goes right the panic your bed and has a huge moment there. Brian Johnson does incredibly well to keep that car out of the barriers because that could have been a very sizable instant as we go to the head of the field and still down Wheeler and Dave Mountain flying formation. But look at Graham Churchill in third place. He has come onto the tail of this leading group. And despite the very finest efforts of Dan Wheeler in defending that lead from Dave Mountain, has now made it definitively a three-way scrap to lead the race. And we haven't got 
all that many laps remaining here at Brands Hatch. They're probably going to have time for another 10 or so, no more than that. And the wheel that's hold on for that long is going to be very, very challenging indeed, particularly now that Dave Mountain seeing Graham Church behind him is going to give Mountain the hurry up, possibly, to think about challenging and moving up into lead the race. That's exactly what he contemplates doing at Clearways as Wheeler takes a sweeping line through. He wants to carry the maximum momentum along the gravel straight. Graham Schurcher gets in the situation behind Dave Mountain. Uh, Mountain in turn in pursuit of Wheeler. So along Graham straight they come. Mountain comes out of the bubble nice and early as they arrive towards the breaking zone for Paddock Hill Bend. It's down Wheeler to the inside, Mountain to the outside. And Wheeler's going to try and hold on here and goes sideways as he pushes Mountain off wide. And into the gravel trap goes down Wheeler. Dave Mountain skitters through the gravel and it means that Graham Churchill assumes the lead of the race. And Churchill, who just sat back, he may have seen that coming down. Wheeler breaking impossibly late. There was no contact with Dave Mountain, but Mountain had absolutely nowhere to go. So he remains in second place, but actually a very distant second place. It puts all the more emphasis on this battle going on behind. Brian Johnson has moved past Paul Inch and down Wheeler has rejoined Hartwick. Here's another look at it. And Wheeler breaking far later than law of physics would allow for a successful run around Paddock Hill Bend. Goes backwards into the gravel trap. Also further back, more uh, dramas to be found. William Ward being elbowed aside as he does battle for 12th position. So it's now Graham Churchill who leads the way and actually leads quite comfortably. Brian Johnson still looking to move up through the field. His next target is Platt Bateney Edwards and this is the fight at the moment for eighth on the road. Also got Martin Hunt right ahead of them around the outside. Drew looks Brian Johnson. Super move that from Johnson. If he can make it stick, and he should have the inside line here for Graham Hill Bed. He's just carried the momentum through, and Johnson takes the position away from Blakeney Edwards. And Brian Johnson, obviously, while he's better known maybe for his day job, has raced with incredible success in America. He's raced in likes of the American Le Mans series, also the Daytona 24 hours, very experienced racing driver with large machinery is Brian Johnson. And so it's really no surprise to see him mixing it with drivers of this calibre. There's Dave Mountain in second place, third place is still Robert Beebe, fourth place is now Peter Cruz, fifth Jonathan Hartop, and sixth Ken Welch. Through Paddock Hill Bend they go, and Cruz stands the possibility here of getting himself onto the podium because he's closing in on Robert Beebe all the while and thinks about the move to the inside up the hill into Druids and through he goes very opportunistic move that from Peter Cruz he gains the place from Robert Beebe who almost loses out again it's Jonathan Hartop and Hartop carries more speed it's Graham Hupend I just wonder or not whether or not Beebe's got a problem seemed quite slow on his left hand there the car though picks up the pace reasonably well along the Cooper straight he may lose the place it's Ken Welsh if he doesn't move across comes to the racing line no harm done there Round clearways they come in this fight for third position, which is now between Pete Cruz and Jonathan Hartog. That gap back to Robert Beebe and Ken Welsh. It's still Graham Churchill in leads. Dave Mountain, slightly distant second there, is Churchill. He's not uh, having any less fun though in the race, still sliding through the corners. Dave Mountain doing everything he can to try and close down Churchill's advantage, but it really feels like a little bit too much of an ask with just a couple of minutes remaining in the race. And then we've got Peter Cruz in third, Jonathan Hartop in fourth, running on his tail. They just pick their way fast on the traffic. That's Jean Chargini in car 91. Then, next to Long, on his own, appeared to be Ken Walsh. We may have lost Robert Beebe as Brian Johnson sets his sights on Martin Hunt now. Well, Dan Wheeler, also part of that scrap. Still very, very tight between third and fourth jinking through Surtees and McLaren and Cruz is going to have to work hard for this to withstand the pressure from Jonathan Hartop through to the chequered flag Hartop though not quite close enough and yes there is Ken Welsh on his own so we've got a problem somewhere for Robert Beebe and that's the problem he brings the car to halt pulls off the road as the rain begins to come down the race that was bathed in glorious sunshine in the early stages is now being hit by a late shower some of the drivers getting the windscreen wipers up and working and this is the last thing the drivers want after 25 minutes of hard and hectic racing for Graham Churchill as he begins to work his way through the traffic it's Rennie de Vries who his next target is does not want to risk slithering off the road in the last stage of the race as Jonathan Hartop has a problem and pulls off the road so Hartop pulls off the road from fourth position 
and that may well give Peter Cruz a fairly comfortable run through his checkered flag as I have Joe flags are bound for Rob Beebe's recovery. Graham Churchill arriving in two clearways and he has driven really the perfect tactical race here. He stayed in contention, he caught up the leading duo and has then counter trouble. It's Churchill who's taken the lead and prevails. He accelerates along the ground straight for the final time, takes the checkered flag in the 366 many a low French battle. Second place goes the way of Down Mountain and third to Peter Cruz. Very enjoyable race that from the pre-66 minis and just wonderful to see so many of them assembled here at Brands Hatch. Let's have a look at the final results. Victory for Graham Churchill, second place Dave Mountain, third Peter Cruz with Ken Welsh and Martin Hunt completing the top five and an excellent seventh for Brian Johnson. So three very happy drivers congregate on the podium as they get the MSVR bubbly. Yeah, I had a bit of making up to do. I got tangled with a, a few behind there, and then once I broke them, I was away, and I could see the two ahead, and just working on those, really. Uh, got right on the tail of them, and they just made a mistake, I suppose, both of them together, and I took advantage of it, and that was it. Second place for you there, how was that? Oh, it was great fun. I did this event uh, last year, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, and I got invited back to do it this year. It's really great. I just can't believe it was only a 25 minute race. It felt like an hour, but it was really good fun. It was hard work. I, I thought two or three times I was off. I uh, just had to avoid cars coming across on the grass once, just to avoid somebody. But yeah, they're, they're good drivers, man. You know, uh, expensive cars, so I think they look after them. But it was fabulous. Every lap was a. I was looking at the, 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 the time, I was like, 10 minutes to go? No, I can't believe it, you know. Being an old pensioner, I was like getting out of breath, you know. So, <laughs> giddy spells when I came in, you know. But yeah, it was a brilliant, brilliant race. Yeah. Well, once again, the minis have given us some fantastically close racing here at Brands Hatch. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you join us next time for more on-track action with Full Speed Racing.